We've come as far as the district of Nida. Around this region, there's a lot of historical sites actually, some of which are well off the beaten path. And we're now in this tiny village, photographing a lost church, which is now full of cow power, but it's got a beautiful ceiling. So I'm gonna help the guys one by one to capture photos in here. And I'm also gonna shoot in the opposite direction to what I've done previously. And I'll show you what I've done. Let's get on in and show you. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing, and you can also check out my website in the description below. Okay, so sometimes I wonder what mode I'm in. What I mean by that is I'm pretty sure I filmed a whole piece in this location on my old Canon M50 about reaching high ceilings, using tilt shift lenses, how we can incorporate the ceiling into the frame, capturing something different from last time using my Canon 24mm lens because my 17mm was actually uh, still damaged. And lo and behold, it seems that I've lost those files on that M50 or left them in it, I'm not sure. So instead, uh, I can tell you a little bit about these churches. Now, these are Greek churches, former Greek churches that have seen better days. These are scattered throughout the region, and uh, I'm going to show you some examples now. So I mentioned in a really old video, a video about a ghost town called Karakoy in the south of Turkey, where there was a population exchange between Greece and Turkey dating back to the 1920s and 30s after a fallout. And that ghost town was left into you know, huge decline and rotting away. I'll link that video above so you can check it out. But all of the churches that you're looking at and the visuals here that you're looking at are abandoned for the same reason. When you walk into many of them, they're in ruins. But some do have interesting colours and details like the one in the visuals above. Others, they're more stripped, bare bones if you will, long past the point of being saved. Across the wider Cappadocia region, there's many of these Orthodox churches, and I've photographed a handful of them by this point. If you want to see other ones as I approach them in the future, check out my Instagram page. I'm going to be photographing a few more new ones in the coming months. Oh, okay, so we're finished inside the church pretty much. We're going to venture on down now to, to Nida. Got the padlock to lock up the door with. We're, uh, yeah, it's a nice spot. We've probably all taken some time, take some shots. Three shots one way, the other way, sideways. I'm gonna load the van up now, get the stuff in there, venture back down this hill into Nida and basically go and photograph another church, a larger one, followed by a cave monastery. I think the best one in the region in terms of like what's inside it still. It's really cool. It's got some interesting angles, compositions, and it's, it's a nice take on the region. So yeah, we're moving on. We're at Gemaisla Monastery. Gemaisla Monastery. And uh, I think it's the best one. Best frescoes, best monastery in the whole of Cappadocia and the region because they're well preserved. Also, you can kind of like roam around it and do what you want, which is pretty cool. So you're not allowed to use a tripod in there. However, handheld, you can just underexpose your images, underexpose your images even on a phone or on the DSLR or camera. And then just rely on the camera's dynamic range to show off the frescoes. It's a really nice color. And the monastery is pretty interesting. I've been here a few times now. And uh, it's a unique one because of this 
cool courtyard that's in the bottom section, which I'm gonna show you now. The monastery consists of rock cut spaces arranged around a square courtyard. These spaces consist of the kitchen, corridors, rooms and the church and there are many monasteries carved into the rock all around Cappadocia but this one is special. The courtyard was also used for burial from time to time. Graves were opened and corpses were buried. Products such as grain and flour were stored in containers made out of terracotta pottery. The most important structure of the monastery is the church to the north. The church is planned with four free support enclosed Greek crosses. There are two burial niches to the north of the northern cross and there are two entrance areas covered with barrel vaults to the west. It is thought at least three different masters worked on the murals of this church and thankfully these murals were repaired in the 1960s by a British restorer Michael Goff. So that's basically that. Cool site, very old, ancient. It's fascinating how they would have built this stuff and, and lived in it and, and used it. And to have fresco still in that condition, I think is, is unreal really, it's pretty cool. I need to find some more in this region. I'm probably gonna come back over the summer months. He needs a haircut. I've got an old shirt. This is the only surviving jumper as well, by the way, from my ever since I left the UK in 2018. It's the only one I have left. The only piece of clothing that I still own from that first time I left. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Ah, oh, venturing down, back to the van. And uh, yeah, and that concludes the early session today, basically. And I'm uh, gonna basically store our stuff in there. It's about a 30 minute drive north. Got my coat on now. Because we're up a mountain. Pretty far up. We're cutting across to Seleme Cathedral. We've changed the afternoon's plan a little bit. And on the way there, there's a church ruin. Uh, in the background, in the distance, all the way over there. It's interesting. I'll get a quick snap. I'm, I've only got 35 mil on, so I'm gonna try and do something off to one side. Quick snap while they're all out of the way. And I think we'll uh, stick that one in the video. Let's try it. So we are at Salem Cathedral. It's a really cool site, this one. It's got like two, maybe three really cool shots. My battery died, so I had to go back and get another one. The group have already gone ahead. As you can see and here, it's quite an adventure to get inside. There's the gated sections. And there's many little caves like this one where we can kind of look out and see a cool view in the neighboring areas. Basically, the aim here is to get three killer shots. And I did those, of course, back in October. And for me, them shots, of course, help to promote what it is that I'm starting to do here in Turkey. But it doesn't mean they're easy shots to get. And I'm going to talk you through them when we get up there. Let's do it. This is the main spot, the main cathedral in Salem. 
And um, basically, I came here, as you know, last year and photographed this shot. I actually got two shots. I actually got two, one of me and my fiance. And what I decided to do is I decided to pull us further forward in the frame. I decided to do that and put us in the frame is because it actually then backlights us and makes us a kind of like stand out from the scene and shows off the scale, of course, of this room. It's a grand shot. It's kind of a cool one. And here's the two images. And you can see there, they're both panoramics, top, middle and bottom. But actually, to be honest with you, I didn't need to do that. To save myself effort coming up the hill, I actually just packed one tilt shift lens. But today I've only got the wide angle with me and you can get exactly the same shot. 15 to 35, wide angle from here creates exactly what you're looking at in the camera right now. Cool, isn't it? And uh, we're going literally over towards the church side where there's the fairy chimneys. We're gonna photograph like basically on that side, check it out. I've not actually been into the church because the light was low. The thing is, is the light that's behind me now there does ray up over the mountain top. So it looks pretty cool if we can time it well. And that's what we're aiming to do. So I'm just basically gonna show the group up to this top section. Yeah, and we'll try and grab them shots before moving on to our final destination today. Final shot. I'll put my shots on the screen from a previous visit because I don't think I'm going to reshoot it. Here they are. So we're up on the final shoot location and you can see that right there. Pretty cool, with this church ruin here. Not only is it in the middle of nowhere, it has also got an amazing landscape behind it. And uh, the ruins look quite cool. And we can all spread out. So a stone's throw away from this church was another one, which we actually ran out of time to photograph as the sun is setting. This whole section is interesting, but there's another segment where they excavated just a few years ago after the discovery of the mother and her daughter mummies, which are now held in Needham Museum. They were placed there a few years back, and if you're ever in the area, it's well worth a visit. That wraps us up for today. A couple of nice shots just to finish. We caught the very end of the sky there. It's so peaceful here, so, so quiet. I just did a couple of like clips on my Instagram stories and it's literally like not a sound. So uh, it's been a bit rushed, running around, manic, trying to fit everything in. It's a big group, so six people, it's difficult to get everyone in and get everything done. We've done it in the nick of time. Like I said earlier, it's quite the drive back. If you've enjoyed this one, give it a comment in the descriptions down below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Yeah, and that takes me to the end of today. Enjoy it. I hope you have. I certainly have. It's been a cracker. Bye-bye for now. And with that, we conclude our Cappadocia mini-series. There'll be more later in the year. I hope you've enjoyed it. Difficult to film with guests while on tour, of course, but it's a pleasure to show you around. See you all soon.